Hurricane season continuing through November. There's fear another storm like Sandy could devastate our shores. Ah, uh, but what if there was a way to lessen the strength of a hurricane even before it hits land? As Fox 5's Teresa Priolo shows us in this month's Big Idea, scientists are actually using groundbreaking technology to try to stop the storm in its tracks. We have a 100 year flood every two years now. It was the storm that turned the East Coast upside down, destroying homes, obliterating businesses, ruining coastlines, uprooting lives. There is no more beach. It is all ocean. There are no more streets. They are all water. Like so many, I watched as Superstorm Sandy reduced our beachside towns to rubble. In the past two years, the focus has been on getting people back on their feet. We can't fight Mother Nature. Get out of her way. But what if you could? Hurricanes are fueled by heat and energy in warm ocean water. Dr. Alan Blumberg of Stevens Institute of Technology has this big idea that if you kill the heat, you'd zap the energy and eliminate or weaken the storm, thus fighting Mother Nature. We have to cool the eye, all the water under the eye, which is an area probably half the size of New Jersey. He says his patented technology, the Hurricane Slayer, is up for the job. Don't judge it by its name. This is just a small prototype. But imagine 200,000 large tubes dropped into the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. Cooler water enters through a bottom valve, and as it exits, it changes the water's surface temperature. The other option, build a few massive slayers. He says both can knock a storm from a Category 5 to a 2. This sure seems like a big idea. And it's a doable idea, too. And I'm pretty sure it will work. Modifying the weather isn't exactly a new idea. Scientists have been toying with this since the 60s. And over the years, there have been a whole host of things proposed that never really went anywhere, like towing an iceberg into warmer regions, dropping a hydrogen bomb into the eye so the heat can disrupt the current, and flying fighter jets around the wall to break the storm apart. And then there's the idea being researched at Stanford right now, harnessing the power of the hurricane's winds. This is an idea of how to simultaneously reduce the impacts of hurricanes on coastal areas while generating normal electric power. Professor Mark Jacobson's big idea is to build a wind farm of 150,000 turbines four miles offshore. As the storm approaches, the turbines tackle the outer bands. They help to cut the wind speeds, which reduces wave heights, supplying less energy to the core of the storm. So by the time the fastest winds in the hurricane, which are around the core in the eye wall, reach the turbines, the, tur the hurricane is already substantially dissipated. His research deals specifically with hurricanes Katrina, Isaac, and Sandy. He says a wind farm could have reduced Sandy's wind speeds by 50 percent and its devastating storm surge by 60 percent. Katrina's winds could have been cut by at least 70 percent. Big ideas, but some meteorologists worry these could cause big problems. If it takes a turn towards another coastal city, that's not a good thing. What if it ends up dropping more rainfall than it would have? The focus still needs to be on how we can better track and better forecast and predict changes of intensity of a hurricane today before we really try to get to modifying the hurricane of tomorrow. But then again, they could also yield big results. Teresa Priolo, Fox 5 News. Mm, interesting, uh, but Nick, are you feeling it? I'm not feeling it uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, I mean, I'm, there's some very interesting ideas, but again, we have to remember this. First of all, a couple of things. The scope of the hurricane, the size of the hurricane, mm -hmm. and you're hearing these numbers of 200,000 of these units, 150,000 of wind farms, what have you. Hurricanes really exist for a reason. And if we think about how the atmosphere works, it's really one large equation. And as we learn just in basic math, one side of the equation has to equal the other. Well, in the wintertime, the polar air comes from the poles and heads down to the tropics. In the summertime, you have to have a mechanism that brings that back to the North Pole. Otherwise, the atmosphere isn't balanced. So if you start 
fooling around with how that balance works. As the other meteorologist had pointed out, you know, we don't know what that could be doing to the hurricane uh, in another location, let's say. And so th these are the things that really have to be uh, considered because, again, the hurricanes really do serve uh, a purpose uh, in balancing that equation in, in, uh, in Mother Nature. And, and part of the other problem is that we've actually brought this on ourselves because we have built on the coast. We have built where hurricanes right, have come right. long before uh, there was homes and buildings and properties built up on the ocean. So we just need better tracking, better forecasting, and a much better way to uh, alert people farther in advance. Yeah. All yeah. right. No easy solution. So as they sure. say, you cannot fool with Mother Nature. Right. This is very right. true. It's true. <laughs> Unfortunately. All right, Nick, thank okay. you.